After the defeat of the Confederate forces and the successful placement of the Psyamitter, the Zerg easily ravaged Tarsonis and began killing everyone in sight. Not just the men, but the women and children as well. The commander sat back and thought about his life, how he had started out wanting to help a colony that was having a hardship due to an unknown enemy and was now using a species of unstoppable man-eating bugs to kill the enemies of his boss. You know, the classic story anyone would want. I've picked up several dozen Protoss warships descending upon Tarsonis. Yeah, that happens. Anytime the Zerg arrive in large swaths, the Protoss... Oh, and by the way, thanks everyone for not telling me their names. Had to figure it out on my own, but anyway, the Protoss show up and glass the planet. I'm sure there's an entire plan circled around this. They seem to be heading on a direct course to the primary Zerg hive. If they engage the Zerg, the Confederates may escape. Okay, wait, so the, the Protoss weren't a part of the plan? I mean, you've seen this as much as me. How is this surprising to, like, anyone? Commander, send Lieutenant Kerrigan with a strike force to engage the Protoss. Captain Raynor and General Duke will stay behind with the command ship. First, you sell out every person on this world to the Zerg. Flashback. As expected, security was light. There was mostly civilians grabbing the last pieces of information before everyone got out. Oh, hey! Look, there are some non-combatants. All right, just tell them to leave without taking anything. They're no match for you guys. End of flashback. Wow, look, Jim, kill all the civilians right now. Rainer now has a conscience, everyone. Then you ask us to go up against the Protoss. And you're gonna send Kerrigan down there with no back- So wait, wait a second. Are you saying that we can do all of this from the ships in space? None of us has ever had to go down there. Why on God's green earth have you been sending me to the place when I could have been doing it from here, sipping some tea? Also, on another note, support Rainer? Like, what, what the fuck, dude? I'm sure those Marines, Goliaths, Vessels, and others are going to be glad to hear that you don't consider them backup. I have absolute confidence in Kerrigan's ability to hold off the Protoss. This is bullshit. Kerrigan, are you reading this? I heard. I'm going down there. Arcturus knows what he's doing. I can't back out on him now. Funny. I never thought of you as anyone's martyr. Jesus, man, these people. Let's just... Let's just get done with it. Why are you doing this, Kerrigan? Look, I know about your past. I mean, I've heard the rumors. I know you were part of those experiments with the Zerg that Mengst came and saved you. But you don't owe him this. Hell, I saved your butt plenty of times. We, um, guys, I, I hate to, like, break up this special moment, but you do know we're actually in the battlefield now, right? I don't think the Zerg nor the Protoss are going to be just standing still while you have this little monologue. Jimmy, drop the knight in shining armor routine. That suits you sometimes. Just not, not now. I don't need to be rescued. I know what I'm doing. The Protoss are coming to destroy the entire planet, not just the Zerg. I know that because, well, I just know it. I am a ghost, remember? Once we've dealt with the Protoss, we can do something about the Zerg. Arcturus will come around. I know he will. Yeah, I don't... I don't really think you're right there, Kerrigan. When the Protoss arrive, they generally just glass the planet. Since they're engaging us in combat, in hand-to-hand -hand on the field combat, it probably means they don't intend to glass this place because it would just be a waste of time. Also, why wouldn't Arcturus just let them do this if they're going to kill everything here? That includes the Confederates since they're on the planet. To that note, if they were going to kill everything on the planet and the Confederates tried to escape, we could just hang out in space and kill them as they tried to go away. Which, I'm, again, not even sure why we care. There's so few Confederates left that they're really not going to be doing anything. And honestly, that's not even the worst of all of this. Why the fuck are you guys calling this thing a planet? It is clearly a space platform. It's... this isn't a planet, guys. I mean, no wonder Arcturus is fooling you so easily. I hope you're right, darling. Good hunting. Anyway, 
The assault on the space platform that Arcturus had tricked these idiots into thinking was a planet goes off fairly well. Expecting an imminent attack from the Zerg, almost like he's done this before, the commander sets up defensive layers on the backside of his base. This takes significant time and delays the Protoss assault, but it does shore up the defenses so that an assault from the rear won't be so crippling. Additionally, the commander tasks the one dropship that delivered all of the assets to the clearly not planet with taking Kerrigan and a complete troop escort. The commander would keep Kerrigan safe and out of the fighting while the rest of the forces engage the Protoss. Speaking of the Protoss, they would have two bases, one immediately to stage right of the commander's forces and one directly in front of them. Because he likes to prepare, the commander was eating resources like they were going out of style and after upgrading all of his marines to the best armor and the best ammunition, Something he has to do every time that we have combat, and no one ever questions. I mean, why not just bring the best armor with you? But anyway, he assaults first the side base and then the primary Protoss base, which is successful. Everything seems to be going very, very well, and well then. Fire Go ahead. Go ahead, HQ. Need a light? Strap yourself in, boys. Base is under attack. <laughs> Receiving incoming transmission. Kerrigan, we've neutralized the Protoss, but there's, there's a, a wave, wave of Zerg advancing on this position. We need immediate evac. Belay that order. We're moving out. What? You're not just gonna leave us! All ships, prepare to move away from Tarsonis on my mark. Uh, boys? How about that evac? Damn you, Arcturus. Don't do this. It's done. Your forces are under attack. Signal the fleet and take us out of orbit. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not sure how we're seeing her fevered pitch dream, since she's definitely not on a planet. That doesn't... It, it... The fleet has lost contact with the ground forces at New Gettysburg. General Minx has ordered the immediate disengagement of the Core Hall fleet from the Tarsonian system. Protoss and Zerg forces continue to battle across the core continent of Tarsonis. Yeah, I'm just aware I just wasted hours of my life on nothing that mattered. Thanks for that reminder. Receiving incoming transmission. I can't believe he actually left her down there. I'm gone, and you better come with me. There's no telling who Arcturus will screw over next. Okay, first, I get that of all the penis cozies you have, she was your fondest. But dude, we just lost about 150 to 200 people down there. And then if you include the Protoss, that's another 300 or more. And if we count the Zerg, almost 1,000 life forms were killed. Not to mention that, but if we go down there, we could probably still save her. Even though she had that dream of being on a planet, she was actually on a platform. She is in a dropship waiting for us. But I'm guessing you're more the type to play the victim instead of actually doing something. Receiving incoming transmission. Gentlemen, you've done... Very well. But remember that we've still got a job to do. The seeds of a new empire have been sown. And if we hope uh, to reach- To hell with you! You're making a terrible mistake. Don't even think to cross me. I have sacrificed too much to let this fall apart. You mean like you sacrificed Kerrigan? You'll regret that. Do you two like, like need a moment? Cause you guys know I'm still a part of this transmission, right? 
You don't seem to realize my situation here. I will not be stopped. Not by you, or the Confederates, or the Protoss, or anyone. I will rule this sector, or see it burnt to ashes around me. If you try to get the fleet way, is prepped and ready, Commander. Awaiting orders. The hell with him. We're gone. We're where we are. Dude, I haven't agreed to anything. I mean, are you even listening to me? It appears that General Duke has successfully activated Tarsonis's primary defensive weapon, the Ion Cannon. The cannon must be shut down if any escape attempt is to be made. You know what? Fuck you. <sighs> okay, okay. I'm going to help on this one, but I'm out after this. I don't care. You know, I've I've heard about this thing called the United Earth Directorate. They seem like upstanding people. Definitely got to be better than you vagabonds. Anyway, let's just let's get this done. It's funny. Seems like yesterday Arcturus was the idealistic rebel crusader. Now he's the law and we're the criminals. Kills me to know that we helped him achieve his goals of conquest. Damn it. I shouldn't have let her go alone. The assault on the Iron Cannon would take a lot more than anticipated since the map is fucking bullshit where the enemy micromanages to an unreasonable degree, instantly leveling all armor and weapons, and even though you've upgraded as well, they still somehow melt all your goddamn troops. And Raynor doesn't know how to stay in his fucking lane, so he'll just get himself killed, and even if you've done this for over an hour, if you didn't save before he kills himself, well just fuck you then. Cause this game doesn't give a damn about video production timelines, and the only way to defeat them is to use nukes, because while they have armor armor of the gods and can instantly counter any offensive you have, the fucking idiots don't think to look for cloaked individuals even though they are more than happy to nuke you into the goddamn stone age using the exact same technology. And another thing- The assault on the Iron Cannon was one of the more arduous attacks. The commander would set up defenses using turrets ahead of forward bases to detect cloaked enemies. The commander was aware of at least two of the bases, but believed there were actually three. The first was a small forward base in front of his own. To the right was the secondary main base that he knew would be a problem. And then there was the primary forward base that he would handle last. Three different targets to take on one at a time. On that topic, the commander would easily be able to take out the forward base after setting up proper defenses, and Raynor was literally locked behind supply depots to keep him busy. Commanding or something. After the forward base, things would slow down drastically as the attack on the secondary main base was extremely difficult. Near 100 to 200 men and women would die attempting to take it. It wouldn't be until the commander decided to switch to nukes that he would be successful. Some might theorize that the necessity of nukes to take out this base was ironic. Given that it was nukes that destroyed Arcturus's planet, it somehow felt like nuclear weapons would be something that his enemies always used against him. Perhaps it was allegorical for how he destroyed everything around him, how he left the universes in ashes, or it's just bad game design. The commander would first hit the production centers of the secondary main base and then its resource centers. After destroying it, he would realize that Tarsonis, you know, the planet that everyone is on, was amazingly a lot like a space platform. Not only are you standing on pure metal, but there is a divide allowing the vastness of space between you and the ion cannon, just like you see on normal planets, the vastness of space in between them. The commander would set up a complete aerial defense perimeter with turrets lining the border. He would then load up dozens of his best troops and prepare for a raid on the ion cannon. This was going to be the last forward push and based on how he had to take out that secondary main base was going to be difficult. The troops along with their escorts would land only to realize there were light defenses. There hadn't been three bases, only two. The secondary base that was assaulted didn't need to be attacked. He just had to block it off and assault the ion cannon directly. The commander was able to easily destroy the cannon now though, but he did it at the cost of hundreds upon hundreds of men and women that didn't have to die. He didn't scout enough. He didn't realize that he should have just attacked the ion cannon head on. Those people didn't have to die or meet their fate. They died for nothing. But now everyone else and everyone was free. <laughs> 
fellow Terrans, I come to you in the wake of recent events to issue a call to reason. Let no human deny the perils of our time. While we battle one another, divided by the petty strife of our common history, the tide of a greater conflict is turning against us, threatening to destroy all that we have accomplished. It is time for us as nations and as individuals to set aside our long-standing feuds and unite. The tides of an unwinnable war are upon us, and we must seek refuge upon higher ground lest we be swept away by the flood. The Confederacy is no more. Whatever semblance of unity and protection it once provided is a phantom, a memory. With our enemies left unchecked, who will you turn to for protection? The devastation wrought by the alien invaders is self-evident. We have seen our homes and communities destroyed by the calculated blows of the Protoss. We have seen firsthand our friends and loved ones consumed by the nightmare surge. Unprecedented and unimaginable though they may be, these are the signs of our time. The time has come, my fellow Terrans, to rally to a new banner. In unity lies strength. Already many of the dissident factions have joined us. Out of the many, we shall forge an indivisible whole, capitulating only to a single throne. And from that throne, I shall watch over you. From this day forward, let no human make war upon any other human. Let no Terran agency conspire against this new beginning. And let no man consort with alien powers. And to all the enemies of humanity, seek not to bar our way. For we shall win through, no matter the cost.